Your Holiness, you will probably remember Anton Zeilinger from your time with him 10 years ago here in this room, but also in Innsbruck, where you tried to see an atom and had the uh, <laughs> unfortunate karma not to see it, I think you say in your... In your Yes. Anton is now uh, working at the University of Vienna, where he and his research group in the foundations of quantum mechanics are doing some of the most important experiments in the area of quantum physics and the new area of quantum information and quantum computation. So it's wonderful to have him back to work again with you on some of these foundational questions. I'm not going to say anything more because we're going to launch right into the science. Anton, floor is yours. Thank you. Well, it's a great pleasure to be here again, and a great privilege. After our two meetings, one was 10 years ago here, and the other one was nine years ago in, in Innsbruck. Right? Now, uh, since that time, uh, you might ask whether everything is the same or whether something has changed in quantum physics. And there are actually two important changes which I would like to report to you during our mm. discussion. Uh, one, one change uh, concerns a technical ch uh, 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 thing happen happening, and I know that Your Holiness, you love technology, <laughs> so I will mention that. Uh, uh, and that is the fact that Based on these fundamental questions, which we discussed already, uh, people are developing a new technology for, inf for information. And that is really a big surprise. It often happened in the history of science that the really big changes came from research which was not done for a purpose, just out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. and this is happening here again. And the second new thing... Mr. Purpose may have to share. That's real unbiased research. Unbiased research, right? It's really unbiased. <laughs> right, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, that's I right. often use it telling uh, Buddhist. Once we uh, sorry, fixed. Uh, fixed some goal, then try to prove that. It's actually biased. <laughs> <laughs> And I agree, and it cannot, it sometimes can be the wrong goal. Hmm, that wrong, the wrong goal, the right goal, Sadi, sure, Tajar. Because rightness or wrongness is something that we can only decide later on. Of course, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. What right. implication? Right. We yeah. find something yeah. with open mind. Right. Then the second, second thought was, yeah. from another viewpoint, now what benefit? Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I agree. I agree, yes. yes. That's exactly my viewpoint also. Now, the second point which happened, which was actually in part encouraged, if not inspired by our earlier discussion, is some new ideas which, are, which we are developing on the, on the conceptual foundations of quantum mechanics. And these are ideas according to which... Quantum quantum experiment Experiment more of an explanation. How to explain the phenomena. Why is the world so strange? Why do we have quantum mechanics? And uh, the approach I will talk later more, but just now in kind of terms of a small overview is that uh, m we are simply asking maybe knowing, maybe knowledge is as fundamental or maybe even more fundamental than reality. I will, I will expose that, I ex will expose that uh, in some more detail later on. But before... <laughs> Material reality. More fundamental than the material reality. 
No. But as I said, this will come later. Yeah. And I suggest we just start reminding us of the, a little bit of some of the issues which uh, uh, we discussed and which are central for, for discussing quantum physics. So. <laughs> So here on the on the first picture, uh, we see we see the famous uh, double slit experiment, uh, the one which I actually showed ten years ago in reality here. Mm. Remember, I had put it up with mm -hmm. lasers mm. here in, mm. in on the on the desk, and this is kind of a, a central. Uh, uh, essential experiment which has been done in reality also many times which shows you uh, or shows us some of the fundamental problems. Now we can uh, quickly uh, go through the phenomena which we observe and the phenomena, the phenomena you observe is very simple, is very basically very simple. You have an you have some, you have some uh, light, say, but it could be something else, coming from the left, going through this first slit. And then it, uh, then it, it uh, passes through, the, through this second screen, which has two slits. And then back there, we have, uh, uh, when both slits are open, we find that they are dark and bright stripes. And if we don't know anything about quantum physics, then this is a phenomenon which can easily be understood. So without quantum physics, it's very simple, because we know that light is a wave. A wave goes through the two slits. And back on this final screen, you have what the two waves add up, which came through the two slits. And at some points, the two waves add each other, so the light is strong there, is bright. At some other points, the waves extinguish each other, and the light and is dark. Cancel each other, cancel, and, uh, and it's dark. So that's easy. But unfortunately, in 1905, a young physicist called Albert Einstein mm. uh, discovered, he was very young at that time, uh, 26, uh, dis discovered that light is made of individual particles. Now the question, how do you reconcile this phenomenon with the idea of particles, of mm. individual Particle. particles? Particle. Particle. Huh? Individual particles. Yes, particles. Right. right. In particular, if you now <coughs> just think about this uh, uh, experiment here, and if you consider an individual particle, then one would uh, uh, classically say that the individual particle can only go through either the upper or the lower slit, which is fine. And then it it goes back to the observation screen and you, you collect it somewhere. Then the problem is that if you do this experiment with many individual particles, one after the other, you collect them on this observation screen, then if you have many, you see the dark and bright stripes. Which simply means that each particle knows that both slits are open. So, so the question then is, how does each particle, which has to go through either, either this upper slit or the lower one, know that the other one is open? Because each particle knows that it must not go to the dark places. Okay? Now this is a puzzle. Uh, so, 
Düdümün düdü var mı? Maritan düdü parçaları ne zaman tam var? Photons. Is it photons or electrons? Photons. You, photons. If you want, you yeah. can photons. You can have electrons. But you send one at a time. One at a time. Yeah. One. Two. One at a time. Yeah. Hmm? But many. Uh, you get the pattern when you send many. Many. Yeah, you get one. You send it. It, it lands somewhere. You can take a second one. It lands somewhere. Third one. It lands somewhere. And after some oh, time, so you see the pattern slowly coming up. Oh, really. After some time, you see the pattern come. Then Rim Singh did the pattern to Yongre. Chik chik tang tang tang. Then Rim Singh did the pattern Yongre. Right. Interference mm. pattern. Mm -hmm. mm. Now the the question is: If you have your your uh, if you assume, which is a pre-quantum view. That each particle takes a path, even if you don't know it, then you have a problem. Because, as I said, how does it know whether the other slit is open or not? Did you explain that? The it has to know the slit is. Mm. And it, the, uh, to make logical sense, you have to say it went through both. Uh, the point is, if I close one of the two slits. Hmm. It doesn't matter whether I close the upper yeah. one or the lower one, no stripes appear. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 But you said it has to not hit the right part. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 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 If I open the post, it never hits the black part. Not do it, do it. Right? The do it. I want to 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 do it. So well, this is well, important. Well, we well, have to well, get well, the phenomenology well, right well, before we can talk well, about the meaning. Yeah, yeah they, they, you should ask that. What? You, you can come in. Use the, use the microphone. Use the microphone. Turn it on. Is it on now? <laughs> <coughs> Suppose one of those two, we're talking about the middle uh, vertical plate there. Close one of those slits. Then when you send particles through, there are no there is no pattern that appears. Yes. Mm -hmm. Close this mm -hmm. and there's no pattern. There's no pattern. Well there's now, all gray. now open it. Now open mm -hmm. it. Let me just finish. Now open it. Now Any we open individual it. particle goes through only one slit. So it shouldn't matter that the yeah. other slit has been opened. Yeah. And yet it does matter. That's a good way to argue, yeah. yeah. So how, how do you interpret this? Yeah. Well, the modern way to interpret this is that if we 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 should we are not allowed to talk about the path a particle takes unless we really measure that path. We, should, we are not allowed to talk about anything happening, any phenomenon, if it's not observed. This is the poor quote I, I wrote down here. No phenomenon is a phenomenon unless it is an observed phenomenon. So we are not allow, allowed to assign a path <laughs> Um, from the Buddhist point of view, um, as we listen to the scientific presentation, much of the, the, the language of phenomena that you're using, from the Buddhist point of view, it would be at the level of what we call the evident phenomena. Mm -hmm. So with regard to evident or observed phenomena, mm -hmm. then it makes no sense to talk about phenomena that is independent of the observation. So it sounds as if we agree here on a point. Yeah. Mm. 